right, guys, welcome to another episode of Golf Juice TV. I'm here today with Beef, Andrew Johnston. Cheers for coming on the show. Cheers, yeah, no problem. How you doing? Everything all right in Portugal? Must be quite nice out there. Yeah, lovely. Can't complain. It's been good to get away from the rain. Mm, happy, yeah, that's for sure. Damn, it's yeah. flooded everywhere at the moment. So what, what are you doing in Portugal at the moment? Are you um, practicing, warming up for the season? Yeah, I've been down here since January, really. I come back, I go for 10 days, come back for a weekend, go back out, um, just to practice. Cool, so that's, yeah. that's your base then? Yeah, it's been my winter base. It's been nice. great. It's I've good. come down November, December as well, so it's been good. Happy days, that's good. Yeah. So what tour are you playing on this year? Challenge tour this year. Challenge tour. Got cool. a full card. Challenge that's tour. Good. So how many events are there in the year? There's roughly. 23, 24 events. Oh, nice. And That's, it's quite compact. It starts. Mm. I've got one. The first one's Kenya mm. in March, early March, and then nothing till April, end of April, and then it's full out from there. Yeah, it's full on, isn't it? So yeah. I was wondering, a lot of am top amateurs, you know, that when they're thinking about turning pro, some of the things they don't really know about until you actually experience it. What's the difference, like from top to bottom, like how you handle your time, um, what, how you prepare for different events, and, and you're off. You know, off time after a round. You know, what what what's it like on a day to day, uh, week at an uh, at an event? Um, obviously the difference with the amateur stuff is more travelling because you're playing two three weeks in a row. Um, so obviously you fly out on a Monday or Sunday, and then you have two or three days to prepare. Maybe play the pro am on the Wednesday, um, and then hopefully play Thursday to Sunday, and then you're off travelling again either Sunday night or Monday morning. So it's pretty full on. Mm. Um, so you have to make use of the good like two or three days you can mm. um, to prepare and then play yes. and usually have a rest day on a Monday. Right. Um, I think the big difference to amateur to pro is is the travelling. Mm. Definitely, it sounds pretty uh, full on. You don't get much time to relax. No. no so sure. when you're on tour, do you get to let your hair down and relax and mess about much? I mean, how how what's it like? Um, not too much. Because it's so busy, mm. and you, you sort of fly to one place and then go to the other place, and you're here, there, everywhere, and there's just no time to really chill out. Mm. Um, if you miss the cut, people tend to fly home straight away on the Friday night or Saturday morning to go back to maybe see their coach, mm. and that's not much. Not much goes on really. A few people go out, but mm. not too much. So you just sort of turn up, do your thing, and then go. It's quite, quite yeah. professional, <laughs> as yeah, it should be, I suppose. It. Sort of come back after the three weeks and then go and see your friends and maybe have a night out then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's timing it right. Ah, oh, fair dues, fair dues. Am I right saying you've played in the Open as well? Yeah, I played the uh, 2011 St Sweet. George's. Nice. What was that like then, stepping on the first tee? Yeah, that was a good experience. I was quite nervous mm. on the first, um, but learnt a lot. It was really good. Mm. I managed to get a practice round with Tom Watson, Gary Woodland. Fantastic. One, so we had quite a big crowd walking mm. around, which was good practice, mm. sort of get used to it. But yeah, it was quite quite intense. It was good. That's good though. I'd imagine that sets you up for other tournaments, you know, because you've played in the Open. It doesn't really get any bigger than that. So, you know, the pressure's never going to be quite the same until you play in the next one. That's, uh... Yeah, exactly. It was, it was a massive learning curve mm. and sort of how to deal with it. There's a lot more noise than you think. People walking on the back, like on the stands behind the green mm. and that people walking up and down. So there's a lot more noise um, which I didn't really notice. That was one thing I picked up mm. and things like that. So it was yeah, massive learning curve. Cool. And so you, you're obviously going to hopefully get to uh, Hoylake this year? Yeah, That's definitely. Right. trying to qualify for that. So do you know where you're going to qualify yet or do, is that not sorted? No, it's usually four courses near near the venue, mm. but I'm not sure where the courses are yet. Oh, cool. I know that one of the final rounds is at Woburn, my club. So if you ever fancy a game down there, then... <laughs> yeah, there's good courses there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, how do you schedule your off peak? You know, when you're in off season, how do you work out what to what to practice and what to you know, leave alone? Uh, I see my coach quite a lot uh, during the winter. Um, if I'm back home, maybe twice a week. So then I go and see him on a Monday, then on a Friday, mm -hmm. and that so it gives me something to work on during the week. And I go and do that, and then I try and fit in the gym. I have uh, physio sessions. Um, if I'm out in Portugal, I come out or he'll fly out for the first few days Sweet. and then leave me for the, like, the last seven so I can just practice and get on with it Happy and try that. and sort of 
get out there, get out here as much as possible now mm. because yeah, you can, it's, it's so much more productive. Mm. Definitely, definitely, I can understand that. Who, who's your coach, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, <laughs> internet's just gone. I'll start that question again. So, yeah. who's your coach, by the way? Neil Jordan. Okay, yeah. He's what? um, he's based at Eilin Golf Club. Was based at Sudbury for um, a long time. Mm. He's gone over to Eilin. And that um, he's a good coach. Coached uh, Warren Bennett mm. for a bit, so it's good. Yeah, it's mm. good. I've been with him for, for years now. Good stuff. Wicked. Now, putting you on the spot here, it's not one of our questions, but what would what advice would you give amateurs? You know, just to get that the small margins to get better. You know, what's the difference between pro and amateur that you could help pass on to them? Um, I think that the one thing I really learned was to be yourself. Uh, when I come in the England training, um, I learned from Amitai, it was great, but it suited some people and it suited different people. Um, I think from Amitai to Pro, you've got to find out what suits you mm. and how you work. Some people like to go to sort of gym in the morning, some like to go in the evening. Um, and I really think it's finding how, how the best way you tick and how you work mm. and how to get the most out of it. Mm. I think that's the biggest difference. And every time you go to an event, you see players doing all their different things at different times. Mm, that's, that's definitely good advice because there's a lot of yeah. programs, not naming any names, where you have to do this at that time. But yeah, you know, I like that idea. You know, different people operate in different ways and are more productive at different times. Yeah. So that makes sense for sure. Yeah, some people love getting up early and getting the gym out of the way. And some people like to feel different on the golf course and practice in the morning go gym in the afternoon in case they ache after so yeah i think you have to find what works for you mm, definitely okay wicked and uh, last question how uh, i know you're with uh, red golf management i just wondered what how, how have they helped you and what, what service do they bring for you uh they've been they've been massive um for me sean redding has been just massive mm. if it wasn't for him i probably wouldn't be playing damn That's and that um i've met him when i was 17 and um, he helped me through a bit of the amateur golf. And um, then when I turned pro, he sort of backed me and helped me. And um, I go up and see him a lot, speak to him most days. Um, he pushes me right direction, um, helps me with schedule and timing and things like that. And always sort of keeps a good check on me so I'm doing the right things. Mm. Oh, and always cool. keeps push pushing me. So, yeah. That's what you need, isn't it? Pushing yeah. in the right direction yeah. as well. It's good to know that someone that's been there and done it, you know, they, they've got the experience just to make sure you're doing the right thing at the right time. I mean, that's that's good. Yeah, it just makes me work hard and, as he says, tick the boxes, you know, every day. Mm, definitely. Just keep doing the right things. Fantastic. Okay, Andy, cheers for uh, coming on to Golf Juice TV. No, um, no problem. Good luck in your season and hopefully we'll be uh, filming you at the Open or something like that. Yeah, brilliant. It'll be great. <laughs> Take care, mate. Cheers. Thanks, man. Right, guys, if you've liked the video, please press like. If you've, um, if you've enjoyed it and you want to say something about it, just comment underneath and uh, share with your mates. Till the next episode, see ya.